Installing OpenSSH in the GUI can be cumbersome sometimes. We're going to streamline it in this video by installing it via PowerShell. Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. In the previous video, we showed you how to install the OpenSSH client in your Windows 10 machine, but we did it through the graphical user interface. And we've paid attention to a lot of the comments. Uh, we encourage you to comment below on this video as well. And what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna show you how to install it via PowerShell. We've gotten some requests for that. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take the time to show you how to do that, but we're gonna go a step farther. In the first video, what we showed you how to do is just bring the client online and connect to an SSH server. What I want to do in this video is I want to show you how to install and bring online the open SSH client on Windows 10, but also show you how to bring the server online via PowerShell and allow us to test the connection. Join me here. We're, in order to do this, we have two virtual machines, both running Windows 10. And if you're ever wondering what version of Windows 10 currently you are running, uh, you can always open up PowerShell and you can type in WinVer, all one word, WinVer, and that'll allow you to see what the version is currently that you're running and you can see that currently we're running the 21 h1 build so I would encourage you that if you want to follow along out there uh, definitely use this build for your um, lab purposes now I've got two machines here uh, the first machine here I have named the win 10 SSH client we're gonna get the client installed on this machine and then once we have that done we're gonna uh, switch on over to another Windows uh, 10 machine that I've called Windows 10 SSH server and what this is gonna hopefully help you do is to um, distinguish which machine we are on we're gonna bring on a uh, bring up a client and then what we're going to do is switch over to this server. We're going to install the OpenSSH server role on this machine, and then we'll switch back over to our client and make an SSH connection to verify that our installation has um, succeeded you know, and is successful. So let's go ahead. We're going to bump on over to our Windows uh, 10, and we're um, going to install our SSH client. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can check to see if this is installed ahead of time. At some point, I'm guessing that SSH will probably be built into PowerShell. Currently, it isn't. But if you want a really easy way to find out, hey, do I have SSH or the open SSH client already installed, you can just type in SSH. And when you run that, if you get an output that isn't red, chances are you're, you already have SSH uh, installed. And if you do, you can always skip forward a little bit and we can show you how to um, install the open SSH server later in this video. Now, if you find out that you've got something like what I have here, a bunch of red text, and it's telling you it doesn't exist, and that means that we're going to have to install it. The other way that you can check this via PowerShell is a commandlet called the Git Windows Compatibility. And if you want to check this out, all you have to do is type Git Windows Compatibility here. And then we're going to do a space, and we're going to hit a dash, or a minus sign, if you will, and we're gonna type online, and then another space, another dash or a minus sign, if you will, and we're gonna type name, and now we're gonna name the package it is that we're looking for. And for us, that's gonna be open SSH dot client, and we're gonna do four tilds, and then we're gonna type in the version, the open SSH client here. For us, it's gonna be 0.0.1.0. .0 .0 .0 and we're gonna fire this off. Oh, and it's letting me know that this requires a, um, uh, an elevated uh, PowerShell uh, prompt, if you will, and this is something to uh, keep in mind. Um, when you're gonna make modifications to your Windows 10 operating system, you are required to be an administrative user and not a standard user, and that's why I'm getting this error here. So, real easy, we're just gonna go ahead and close this PowerShell down. We'll right-click on the PowerShell icon that I've got pinned to the taskbar, and I'm gonna choose Run as an administrator. What we should see is that's gonna fire off the user account control requiring us to say yes and now we have an administrative uh, PowerShell prompt here. Now inside of the PowerShell prompt uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just type a CD backslash and then I'm gonna clear the screen gives us a little bit more real, uh, real estate. Now all we have to do is rerun that same command get dash compat uh, windows compatibility space dash online space dash name and then remember to get the package right this is open ssh dot client four tilds, 0.0.1.0, .0 and we run this, and this time when we run it, if we've got the administrative PowerShell open, uh, it'll allow us to look down into the Windows subsystem and find out if it is currently present. Now, notice what it's letting us know, uh, or it's giving us a little bit of information here. It says that the OpenSSH client isn't available. Now, that's how you do it formally in PowerShell. 
But remember, it's just as easy to type SSH if you want a little faster way to tell if you've got it installed. Now, once we can validate that, well, we don't have it installed, we can actually just use our up arrow and make it easier to type because you've seen my typing abilities here. And I'm going to change the verb at the first part of that commandlet from get. I'm just going to backspace that out and I'm going to type add. All right. And it isn't case sensitive, but I'll go ahead and try to keep it um, true to the win of the PowerShell uh, syntax, if you will. And we'll hit enter. Now you're going to see that I get this little green or aqua type green bar over here. And every time, anytime your PowerShell is reaching out to Microsoft servers, whether it's updating the help files or in this case, adding a functionality, you're going to get this little progress bar here. And depending on how much, how many resources you have uh, in your system, how fast uh, your internet speed is, if you will, your network connection, then coupled with how big the package is that you're installing, it could take you a little bit of time for this to finish. Now, once it finishes, we can, what we're going to do is we're going to show you what it would look like if we were to run the Git-Windows compatibility looking at that operating system and verifying that, hey, the, uh, the package is present and is installed. So while we're waiting on this, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to jump back over to the next machine and we're going to verify if we've got the OpenSSH server installed. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to download and install that package. So let me go ahead. I'm going to switch over to the Windows 10 machine that I'm using as my Windows Open SSH server. And we're going to type that same command, but we're going to modify the package name a little bit here too. So I'm going to type git windows compatibility and then space. And we're going to do an online space dash name, making sure that I spell it right. Syntax is everything here. And we're going to type open SSH dot server. We're going to do four tilds and zero dot zero dot one dot zero. And we're going to go ahead and run this. And again, it's telling me that this requires a elevated um, PowerShell uh, window. So I'm going to go ahead and close this down. Right click on my PowerShell icon. We'll run this as administrator. It'll trigger the user account control. So again, if that happens, it's perfectly fine. It was just a standard user's PowerShell. We want the administrative PowerShell. And I'll do the same thing that I did before. We'll do a CD backslash and clear the screen and we'll rerun that command. And now that we have that elevated PowerShell prompt, what we should see here is whether or not the OpenSSH server uh, capability is actually installed. And I can see right here that it says it is not present. So we want to go ahead and we want to install this as well. Now, the great thing is we can rerun this commandlet and I'm going to do the same thing that we did for our client. I'm going to just change that verb there in the par first part of the commandlet from get to add. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this. And you can see the same thing is going on here that was going on on the client side. It's reaching out to Microsoft's update servers and it's going to pull down this extended functionality. Now we switch back over to our client. We'll let that go ahead and run. Uh, and at this point, if we rerun on our open SSH client, if we run that get windows compatibility again, just by pushing the up arrows, what we should see now is that the state has gone from not installed to installed. And that's what we want. Let me show you real quick there, ladies and gentlemen, what I was talking about, an easy way to figure out if the SSH client is installed. Remember I told you you could just type SSH. Now, once it's installed, you might see that you get some output that will give you some options with SSH. And it doesn't seem to be doing that here, but it could be available depending on which version of the uh, Windows operating system you have, more specifically, which build of Windows 10. All right. So, uh, we're still waiting on our uh, Windows uh, OpenSSH server to come online. And uh, what we're going we're gonna to go ahead and do is we'll take a little bit of a break here. We'll let this get installed and then we'll join you in once it's finished and we'll uh, move forward in our demonstration. So now you can see right there that it tells us that, uh, you know, uh, online, our computer's operating system is still running and it's asking us if we need a restart. If we run that Git Windows compatibility one more time, what we should see is that the state has gone from uh, not present to installed. Now, you might think that we're ready to go, right? We've got our op we've got our OpenSSH server uh, feature installed, but uh, the case uh, it, that's just not the case. What we have to do is we have to do a couple of things. Remember that the server responds to incoming requests, which means it's a service. We need to get that service started. 
But the other thing I want to show you how to do is not only how to get the service started, because if we start the service and then we reboot the computer, the service isn't going to start again. So that could be problematic, especially when you're talking about things like servers, which you typically don't reboot much. Let me show you how you can verify that the service is present and whether it's running or not. Very easy PowerShell command. Let's just type get service and you can do a space dash name and SSH, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little asterisk behind it because I know there are two services that are present, one that we currently don't need, one that we do. And when I run that, you can see we have the open SSH uh, authentication agent, which is installed by default. It's not running by now, uh, right now. That's actually gonna come up in a later video that we're gonna do when we talk about things like key-based authentication here in Windows 10 on open SSH server. Uh, but the one that I want is the one that says stopped underneath that. That's SSHD or the secure shell daemon. We want to get that up and running. All right, but before we do that, let's change this service to start automatically, which means the moment we push power on this computer, that service is going to start up. And in order to do that, what we can do is a set dash service space name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type SSHD space and then we're gonna type a dash startup type. And then from here, single quote, and then we're gonna type automatic, and we're gonna hit enter. Now, very anticlimactic here, it doesn't really look like it's done much, uh, but all it said is, hey, let's go ahead, and when, that, uh, when the operating system starts up, let's get this service online and running. But now what we need to do is we need to start the service, and if we wanna start the service, it's very easy to do. All we have to do is do a start service, space dash name and sshd and hit enter and when we hit enter it's asking us waiting for that service i pushed uh enter too many times it was telling me to slow down <laughs> and uh, now what we need to do is just verify that the service is actually started up and then we should have an open ssh server ready to go all right so we'll go ahead and we'll do a get service and then we got our ssh and i just kept the uh, asterisk there uh, to give me anything that starts with ssh and i can see that our ssh server is running now the last thing that we want to show you is that verify that our client can connect to our open ssh server now this is another uh some of the comments that we've got in our youtube channel there on the last video that we did and it, it can get a little bit confusing as when we log on, what credentials do we use? This is our open SSH server that we've got installed and running uh, that you've seen me use uh, PowerShell. All right, this, in order to connect to this SSH server, I have to have an account that has the privileges on this server to log in. And that's important to understand. All right, so we're on our uh, client machine. Again, our one that, uh, our machine that is running the SSH client. Now earlier, you probably seen where I typed SSH after we had the open SSH installed, uh, and it still gave me the red text. What you might have to do sometimes, uh, you might have to do a, a refresh, if you will, uh, in PowerShell. And it's just like any other reboot. All it is is just closing down the PowerShell uh, window. You can right click on it. And for me, I'm gonna go ahead and just run it as administrator. Uh, typically with the um, SSH client you don't have to run it as administrator but you're going to notice now once i've restarted the powershell interface here what we're going to do is we're going to connect back to our ssh server now it's important to understand when it comes to the authentication i'm on my client when i connect to the server over the network from here i have to use an account that's on the open ssh server and it has the privileges to log in, all right? I don't want you to think that when I use this PowerShell on my client, that I'm using any user account on this client. It's actually on the server. But here's, let me show you what I was talking about. When you run SSH, if you've already got it installed, this is what you should see. Uh, not what you seen earlier after we installed it, it was still giving me that red text. I just closed down the PowerShell, open it back up, and it sees as, a, as an available package now. Now, in order to connect, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen here. We're gonna type SSH space. And remember, I'm typing an account, uh, a user account uh, that is on the SSH server. So student, student O2 is actually an account on the Windows 10 machine running the open SSH server. We're gonna go ahead and use the at symbol and I'm gonna use the local IP address of the machine. So for me, that's 10.0.13.1 and we're gonna hit enter. And now what we see is we've got some authentication that's going on. This is our, this is our server saying, hey, this is who we are or who I am. And you need to verify that you uh, know and trust that server. I'm gonna type yes. And now we are connected. 
And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a CLS on this screen. And uh, let, let me enter the password. Doesn't seem like it like that. Okay, there we go. Now we're logged in. And if you notice the username here, notice it's student02 at, and then it says win10 SSH server. That's very important. And again, based on some of the comments we got when we shown you how to do this through the GUI, how to get the uh, client online, some people um, didn't quite understand how I was authenticating. Again, keep in mind that I'm using an account that's on the SSH server, and if I need to verify that, other than just the command, the prompt here, I can always type "Who am I?" and you can see that this is a this is Student02 with that account on the OpenSSH server. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So in this video, remember that we've shown you how to stand up the OpenSSH client, uh, first to verify if it wasn't even, pre uh, if it was present in the first place. And once we got it installed, we tried to verify whether it was installed or not, but we needed to shut down our PowerShell, reopen it, and then you can see just typing SSH verifies that it is installed. We also went to another Windows 10 machine, the one that we called the OpenSSH server. We installed the OpenSSH server service through PowerShell, and then finally Finally jumped back over to our client, made our connection, logged in. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you install OpenSSH on Windows 10.